day. I'm Dr. Kilmer. I'm Zinnia and I'm five years old. This is Zinnia. She's part of my pandemic reality these days. <laughs> I'm a lecturer um, in anthropology at SDSU and also in Asian studies at SDSU and also in anthropology at USD. Hi. I'm Ramona Perez. I am a professor of anthropology and director of the Center for Latin American Studies here at San Diego State. I also chair the Institutional Review Board, um, and I am the chair of what is called the Aztec Identity Initiative. And as some of you may know, I've had the very distinct honor of being elected as the incoming president to the American Anthropological Association. So I've been uh, president-elect for a year. I'll have another year as president-elect. And then in 2022, I will step into, um, well, actually in November of this year, I will step into the role of president of our amazing American Anthropological Association. Hi, I'm Erin Riley. I'm a professor in the Department of Anthropology at San Diego State University. And I teach both undergrad and graduate level courses in primatology, biological anthropology, and uh, anthropological research design. I'm Dr. Isaac Ula. I am an archaeologist, specialty in computational methods in archaeology and geoarchaeology. So I'm Seth Malleus. I'm a professor of anthropology. I also direct the South Coastal Information Center which is the archeological archive for San Diego and Imperial counties. And then I'm also the university history curator. Uh, so my name is Nicole Mapwick and I'm an assistant professor at, in SDSU anthropology. Uh, I teach a variety of courses um, and I'm developing new courses. So I've taught 602, which is the graduate seminar, um, 302, uh, which is uh, principles of anthropology, uh, principles of archaeology. Uh, I've also taught uh, 349, roots of civilization. Um, currently, I'm teaching historical archaeology and North American archaeology. And last semester, I taught uh, zooarchaeological methods, which is one of the new classes that I've introduced since coming to SDSU. Um, so that kind of gets me into my area of expertise. Uh, I study dead animals, yeah. Um, so I am a zooarchaeologist by training and I study the archeologies span of colonialism. Um, so I use animal remains from archeological sites to understand how environments and people's resource usage changed as a result of contact uh, in the colonial period in the Southwestern US and Northern Me Northwestern Mexico. Can you briefly describe your past research endeavors? Most of my research has focused on the human primate interface. So the ways in which humans and other primates uh, interconnect. And I've done research in uh, central Sulawesi and in Indonesia, uh, also in China and, um, and also in Silver River, along the Silver River, which is in the state of Florida here in the United States where um, feral population of rhesus macaques lives. Uh, I work all over the place, but these days mostly in southern Italy, and uh, my interest is human environmental interaction, mostly farming and subsistence, and uh, land use, and how it impacts landscapes. Yeah, so I was site supervisor at, at Jamestown, Virginia, the site of the 1607 fort, um, and I, I worked there for about uh, three or four years. Uh, absolutely love that project. Over 2 million artifacts from the early 17th century. Um, I did my dissertation out there uh, looking at the early Spanish mission site, uh, the fort site at Roanoke, and then the fort at Jamestown. Um, and then I came out here 20 years ago and I started a bunch of new projects. Uh, cemeteries and gravestones of San Diego project, uh, digging up on Palmar Mountain at the Nathan Harrison site, digging at the Whaley House in Old Town, um, then we started finding a bunch of lost and forgotten murals, and so that became a, a big project as well. Uh, and lo and behold, I found myself doing the history and archaeology of San Diego State itself. Um, and there are so many hidden treasures on campus 
that that became a big focus. And then an offshoot of that was looking at the unparalleled history of black popular music in San Diego State. So I am, I am trained in political anthropology um, and as an applied researcher. All of my work is community-based participatory research. So my dissertation um, research was on women's empowerment through tourism, and that resulted in a refined focus on two, care, two key areas of my current research, which is lead poisoning and its health implications um, across generations. Lead, lead isn't something that just kind of goes away in a single generation. Um, and state level structural marginalization and violence against rural and indigenous populations in Mexico. My main areas of expertise are medical anthropology, gender, and my regional expertise is South Asia. In the past, I've done research in India on women's health, and my current research interests are a bit on hold because it's hard for me to get to India these days, but hopefully I can get things going again soon. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Mysterious pneumonia outbreak in Wuhan, China. A new type of coronavirus. The number of affected countries has tripled. The World Health Organization has just declared that this is a pandemic. It's, it's been a big hit. Um, you know, the, the first thing was, is we put so much work into this exhibit at the History Center in Balboa Park opening up, and we've had to re redesign it more than a few times because we can't squeeze people into small spaces. We can't have people touching common objects. Um, and so we've spent a lot of time transforming this exhibit into a dual exhibit that's both online and in, in person. Um, and so that was a that was a huge transformation for us. And at times, it's it's felt exhausting. It's it's kind of like if you write a paper and you don't save it, and then having to do it again, and then doing that a third time. So that there's the fatigue from that. Uh, COVID, the, the pandemic has essentially meant that I have not been able to travel to the field to do field work. Uh, I was on research leave, academic year 2019-2020. Um, and because of COVID-19, I basically had to cancel all field work, but I had planned for my protected time, research time, which was quite disappointing. Um, it's also meaning that I probably will, will unlikely for me to travel to the field in 2021. And this also obviously impacts my students as well. Yeah, it's been tough. We had to cancel our field program. We had a budget, we had personnel, we had everybody lined up. Some of us even bought plane tickets, luckily not me, for last summer. And, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit, it was all uncertain. It was played down a bit. Uh, obviously, the previous administration didn't handle it really all that well. Uh, but we were seeing news actually out of Italy and how bad it was there. And that was the reason why we canceled our field school, uh, field, not school, but field program in the big, you know, when we did, not because we thought it was gonna be that bad here in the United States. Obviously that changed and we realized that it was a good idea. We had postponed everything. So we haven't done any field work. Um, and unfortunately what it means is our grant expired. And so we had to spend money on other things, the, the last little bit left. And we're in between funding. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but we're not slated to go this summer and uh, who knows for the next summer. 
in terms of like reading, writing, uh, lab research, that's all slowed down too, just because, you know, everything is kind of ground to a real slow pace, having to work from home, raise a daughter, <laughs> uh, you know, and do all of that kind of stuff and, and, and transition all my classes to online has been um, a challenge to say the least about it. So, you know, a little bit of work has happened, but not nearly at the same pace that it typically you know, in a, in a, in a quote unquote normal year would, would happen for sure. It's been tough. So basically has meant to, especially last semester and this semester as well, transitioning to completely virtual instruction. Um, and prior to this, I um, had no experience teaching online. I certainly have had, you know, um, had to, have a few classes online just because of you know things that have come up um, before, but to basically it meant converting all of my classes to a virtual instruction, which um, has been interesting um, and a lot of work <laughs> to to develop. Um, and there's still a lot I can learn for sure. If you can believe it, and I, I can't believe I'm embarrassing that uh, admitting this to you, but there was a point where I actually dressed up in one of those green suits. Um, <laughs> to teach people how to dig, you know, like one of those video game suits with all the little balls and they, they have me shovel shaving and laying out a square and troweling and screening. That's one of the strangest experiences I've ever been a part of, but trying to teach people how to dig uh, when you can't be together has been a huge challenge. And even, even my big intro course, the Intro to Cultural 102, uh, doing that online, I don't love online teaching. I love being in a room with people I feed off of, you know, in-person inspiration uh, and staring at a hundred little Zoom squares, you know, scrolling through the squares and trying to get people excited about anthropology. It was very difficult. And, and something that, that I can divulge is usually when you're teaching, if you're teaching a subject you love and if it's research you've done, people get into it. But when you're doing it online, looking at all those little squares of people who look miserable, um, it's really hard. Um, and, and nobody's, you no one's doing it intentionally. Everybody looks awful on Zoom. Um, and so that was, you know, that was, that was a real challenge, um, just trying to reach people um, through Zoom. And then we all have so many Zoom meetings. Um, everything from the design of the stadium to figuring out commencement to department meetings to history center um, and every single one of them everyone's just trying their best The most inspiring aspect of teaching during the pandemic is my students. My students are the best and you keep me going. And I'm so impressed with how you have all handled all of these challenges. So with that said, I want to thank you for honoring Anthro Day. I wanna thank you for choosing anthropology as your major, your minor, or your graduate field of study. I want to thank you for believing in the discipline and for becoming an anthropologist. Um, and if you're watching this and you are not an anthro major, minor or graduate student, come talk to me because I think I can convince you um, to join us, to join our, um, our amazing community.